Starters back on the court for the Railers, Tyler Horsham, Max Cook, Joey Olden, Gavin Block, Edward Bowlby. Railers will have the basketball going to the basket farthest to our left here at Roya Sanderson. Josh tied at 21, certainly going to need a better effort here in the second half or uh, this long evening could get even longer. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't want it to after a, a double overtime in the sophomore game. Railers with the possession, move it around the perimeter. Max Cook, top of the key, swings it to Joey Olden. Joey swings in, pull up jumper, that's going to be no good. Gavin fighting for the rebound, but it falls into the hands of Yunker for Normal West. But it was a good look from Joey. Yeah, good ball movement, and, and uh, Joey can hit that 10-footer. Uh, into the front court for Coach Brian Couples. Almost knocked away, nice defense by Max and Joey. Robinson is able to uh, dribble through, bounce it down on the baseline, skips it out to Breen. A little bit different the way we're moving, Jeff. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I think you're. You were either going to see that, or they'll be right back where they were throughout mm -hmm. most of the second quarter. Marine, Morais, inside Yunker, 14 short. footer, left it way short. But coming in for the rebound is Justin Fisher. He grabbed the air ball, and so Normal West will keep it. Yeah, guys, still not uh, not going to find bodies and rebounding. Minute gone by in period number three. Yunker goes up against Ed. Off the glass is good. Yeah, great ball move by Norma West, and you know we were we were moving better, uh, but uh, the uh, the ball movement by Norma West that possession was just was just better than uh, than our defense. Trailers down 23-21. Gavin at the free throw line kicks it out to Max underneath Bobby. Nice strong move. Won't go down, but Bobby will go into the line, and he will be shooting to him. That Josh, you talked about that. As big as he is, and as imposing as he is. Ed finds a way to get lost a lot, and people, defenses can't find him. Well, what they've done is they move their middle man up to guard our middle man, who's Gavin, at the free throw line, and their their backs have to extend out so far because of the shooters that the Railers have that that Bobby just keeps to, keeps running short porch to short porch, and that's just outside of the lane right around the basket, and uh, we, we've got to look for more baskets coming from there. Bobby gets the first one to go, second one will not. Railers 2 of 4 from the line tonight, and they're down by 1, 23-22. Yunker slips it into Robinson. Robinson kicks back out to Breen, fakes the 3, steps over. Now to Marais. As we talked about, if uh, the varsity is any uh, indication of, from the sophomores, uh, they're content to run 40, 50 seconds of clock. Yeah, and I, I think that's the, one of the big... You know, one of the only reasons or ways that they're going to score here. I think the Railers, as Gavin gets a rebound off a miss from Breen from three, but we've got to push the basketball and, and get uh, get some momentum going, get this crowd into it a little bit. Max looking, looking instead over to Tyler. Swing it over to Joey inside to Gavin in the lane with the nice yeah. pass off the glass is good for Gavin. Gavin's too quick for uh, for Yunker under, underneath, and uh, he caught it at the free throw line. Did one little head fake, went right around him. And as there's a steal by the Railer defense, we've got to get more scores from Gavin around the middle and right in the round in the basket. So the turnover gives it right back to the Railers as Gavin and Max tipped it away. Underneath again, Ed makes the move. Back out to Joey, right side three. That one won't go down, and Yunker the only one there for the board for either team. Head quickly to Morice. He goes against two Railers, but Gavin did a nice job of knocking it away, and Ed was there to try and take the charge. Nothing was called. It'll stay with the Wildcats. Railers up one, 5.15 to go in the third. I think with good ball movement and, and movement by Bulby and uh, Block, I'm not sure I'd shoot another three tonight. I'd get into those two right around the basket, anywhere from 10 feet and under, and uh, I'd just beat them up inside. Green back out to Robinson. Five minutes to go in the third. You know, the Railers aren't getting those tip away as we were getting early on in the game, Jeff. Yunker turns from 15, hits again. He has six. He's shown enough ability to hit that free throw line that you just kind of got to stay up on him, and then you give one of their shooters a little room. So um, I've been pretty impressed, really, with Normal West. Gavin in the lane turns, doesn't take the shot, kicks to Joey for three, and it's yeah. good from the corner. Nice kick out by Gavin with a big three. Uh, Joey still hot, still playing hard uh, as he was all Collinsville. And Joey reaches in and forces a travel. So again, good defense from uh, the Railers, especially Olden turns it back over. Railers up two with the ball. Yeah, they've been really comfortable, and the Railers have kind of let them be comfortable. We haven't sped them up a little bit. We're kind of letting them play at their speed, and that's why they're they're able to get some uh, some shots off. We got to push the basketball and and pressure a little more. 
Gavin fadeaway turns, spins out, no good from just outside the lane, and the Wildcats get the board. And it's thrown away, unforced error there by Breen as uh, he and Robinson uh, miscommunicated on the backcourt uh, pass. Yeah, we got Gavin with a little 10-footer there, kind of falling away a little bit. Let's, you know, instead of that, let's do the thing where he did a couple possessions ago and, and get to the rim for an easy layup. Already halfway through the third, the lob play from Joey to Ed. The pass wasn't there where Bulby could catch it. Bulby tried to tip it in. Max almost with the steal is tipped away. Max, and then a foul is going to be whistled on a normal West as uh, they prevented Max from going to the basket. Uh, real hectic play here to start the uh, yeah. third quarter. No one, it really hasn't gotten into a good rhythm for either team. No, not, not very pretty at all. 3.55 to go. Railers hanging on to that two-point advantage here in the third quarter. Again, starters on the court for the Railers. Olden over to Horsham. Tyler will fire off a long three and yeah, connect. We got it. That was a big one. We needed that one. Tyler getting on a little roll here. We're going to need him in uh, not only this game, but some of the, you know, every game from now on out. We need two or three threes from, from Mr. Horsham. Another steal by the Railers. Max over to Tyler. Can he hit two in a row? That's off no good. Trying to get the rebound. And the ball comes down to the Wildcats. Railers' lead is 5, 30-25. Their biggest lead of the night came at 9. That was in the first quarter. 3.15 left in the third. 30-25. And Joey's going to be whistled for the foul out high. That'll be foul number 2 on Joey. Yeah, not a bad foul, though. Joey going after the ball. Uh, pressure in the basketball is... That's just the first team foul on the Railers here in the second half. So uh, Railers and, and Joey uh, staying aggressive. And, you know, you, you're, you can go after that one and, and try and get another tip away as he's gotten so many here for the Railers tonight. 3.08 to go in the third. Along with Josh Kominick, Jeff Benjamin with you. We've got a close one here in Lincoln as the Wildcats and the Railers. A five-point lead for the Railers. Inside, Yunker again turns and hits from about 15. Yeah, it's a uh, nice little touch for Yunker. 6'6", six, six, goes probably about 220, 230, and nice little touch is a good passer from the high post. When you talked about it early, Josh, when teams can get someone in the middle, that's when you have trouble. Is Gavin does a nice job finding Bulby on the baseline. He floats it in off the glass and, and good. And, and that's, what I was, the line. that's what I was talking about. We, I don't think we have to shoot another three tonight. I mean, there, you, you can get the passing in. Come to the top to Gavin. Those guys got to come at Gavin. They sh he's shown that he can make that free throw line jump shot. Pass it down to Bulby who roams around on the short porch, and he got two points every time. I mean, let's if let's let's not go away from what's working. Bulby with seven on the night hits the free throw, make it eight. You know, I think if I was coach, I'd say. Uh, you know, you shoot a three unless it's after about eight passes where we didn't get anything inside. Uh, you know, I, if you don't do that, you're, you're coming out. I mean, there's no reason. Will Cook and Peyton Ebelair back in for the Railers as the Railers did a nice job pinning the Wildcats on the sideline, knocking it out of bounds. It'll stay with Normal West. Green looking, still looking, gets it into Yunker. Two fifteen left in the third. Railers with the six-point advantage. Yeah, Breen, uh, Breen yet to get off a shot, I think, here in the second half. So the Railers done a lot better job of getting out on number 20. Breen, who hit two threes in the first half. Uh, it's been Yunker now that's been scoring uh, around that 10-foot range. After it's knocked out of bounds, it'll stay with the Wildcats. Breen fires a three and hits. Did I say anything? Send your cards and letters. I didn't, I didn't hear anything. 33-30, <laughs> yeah. block into the front court for the Railers. Hands to Max Cook. Max brings it left, now back to the right. Evil Air, bounce down to Gavin. Gavin turns, kicks back out, and Bulby in the corner. It's on the way, it's up, in and out, no good. Will Cook goes flying in for the rebound. Nice job by the junior. Evil Air, back to Gavin, his top of the key. Three is good. Nice. Yeah, I mean, credit. Credit Will Cook with that, the big offensive rebound. He got it to Evil Air. Evil Air made the extra pass to block at the three-point line. So great job by Will Cook of getting that offensive rebound. 36-30, back to a six-point advantage for the Railers. Under 90 seconds to go. Yunker now 
Uh, that was, uh, I think he's starting to feel it a little too much as he uh, just turned and shot it, I think, before you got squared up. Yeah, now the railers are starting to jump on his uh, shots. you gotta got to pay attention for the, uh, the pump fake and, and go around. In the corner, Breen's three on the way. Good again. Timeout taken by Coach Brian Couples. 117 to go, 36-33. Josh, we will keep it here with the full timeout. Railers are only up by three, and Breen now with four three-pointers on the night. He has 15. He's got a nice-looking shot, and you, yeah. you know, it, it's it's interesting. You take a look at a team that comes in with only two wins here tonight, and you look at Breen, what a good outside shooter he is. Yunker certainly does a nice job for them down low and from that 15-foot range. Uh, it's kind of hard to see how they ended up with only two wins this far into the season. Well, I know they've got some good competition in the Bloomington Normal area. Of course, U High is good. We saw them last year in the regional championship. Uh, normal community has uh, generally a good team. I don't know anything about Central Catholic, but they've had a good uh, schedule, I guess if you want to call it a strength of schedule so far, I think. But, yeah, they've, they've got a decent team, I, and I think. But, but you're, as your Raylor, you're going to find this. And, and these guys know it. Every night that you come to Roy S., when a team – who has, they should lose, you know, probably by 20 or 25. Not a care in the world, not anything. If they lose by 25, the paper's going to say, well, they should have. Uh, and then you've got where you're the, you're the Railers, you're ranked in state, you're undefeated, you just won Collinsville. You're going to get every team's best effort, and uh, the Railers have to match that effort by the, uh, by the opponent. So after the timeout, the Railers with the basketball. Underneath, they tried to get it to Bobby, but nice defense by the Wildcats, tipping it away. And then Gavin's going to get whistled for the foul as he knocked it. Uh, out of the hands of Breen. It'll be inbounded on the baseline. Gavin picks up his second foul. Railers foul number 22. Gavin blocked his second. Out of bounds to Robinson in bounds into the backcourt. Chased down by Breen. He'll turn and face Will Cook. Under a minute to go in the third. Lincoln with a three-point advantage, 36-33. We were tied at the end of the first and second quarters. Nice pull-up move by Robinson. Tried to avoid the charge. Bobby gets the rebound, and then Robinson comes in and gets whistled for the foul. Yeah, every time that uh, either Block or Bobby try and set that charge, and, and one of the offensive players picks it up, they, they worry about not charging and then miss the easy shot. So uh, good job by Block of attempting to take the charge and throwing the rhythm of the, uh, the uh, offensive guy off. They get it inbound to Will Cook. 45 seconds to go. Will brings the dribble over now to Max Cook. Yeah, we need a big basket here. Up three with 35 seconds left. The Railers need a uh, need a good hoop going into the fourth quarter. We'll start the fourth quarter with possession. So a key point in this one. Railers up three. Could uh, stretch it out a little bit here with 25 seconds to go in the third. Cook with only a three-pointer on of the night. Gets it over to Will Cook. Down to 13. Gavin at the free throw line. Almost walked with it. Turns underneath. Bobby off the glass. Count it. He's fouled yeah, again. It, it just, it can be there all night. You know, they're, they're, when we catch it at the high post, which is the free throw line, they're, they're, their wings and their backs spread out so much to guard our shooters that Bobby's just hanging around the short porch. And it, there it is again. He gets another layup and a free throw coming up. So, uh, you know, if I'm, if I'm Lincoln and, and coach, I, I just say we go back to Gavin and, and Gavin and Bowlby. Bring us home. Free throw good, 39-33. Ed with 12. They cross half court. Breen looks. Jumper on the way. That's going to go down as the third quarter ends. A three-pointer from Rice. So the momentum goes back to normal west as we get ready to head to the fourth. At the end of three, it is Lincoln at 39. Normal West 36, back with a fourth in a moment. You're listening to Lincoln Railer Basketball. Fourth quarter of action underway at Roya Sanderson. Railers with a three-point advantage at 39-36. Wildcats with the basketball. Robinson pulls up top of the key. That's no good. Yunker tried to grab the rebound. It's tipped around, and Gavin Block has it. Flips it around to the near side to Ebelair. Railers in the front court. Bowlby, Block, Olden, Will Cook on the floor for the Railers. Yeah, interesting. Coach uh, has got Max on the bench and uh, to start this fourth quarter. Block with a nice move down the lane. The up and under is good. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, it should be Gavin Block and Edward Bowlby bringing us home right now. Uh, they cannot stop them in the paint. And then it's knocked out of bounds, and it's going to stay off normal west. And 
I'm not sure if he stepped out of bounds before the contact, because I heard the slap all the way up here. Yeah, well, we, uh, we'll take it at this point, because uh, they've been hitting threes like crazy. Normal West, 7 of 12 Ooh. from three-point land. Well, we saw what good three-point shooting could do for the Railers down in Collinsville. Now we're getting a taste of what's going to happen when it goes against them. But there's Joey hitting one for the Railers for three. Yeah, he's really carried us. I, I thought his energy has been awesome tonight. Uh, the senior wearing the number three has been uh, has been the player of the game, uh, if we have one so far through uh, three quarters, basically. Railers have stretched it back to eight, 44-36. Six and a half to go in our contest. Yunker working against Gavin. Turns, jumper, shot over Good everything. Job, Rebound comes down to Gavin. Ebler back over to Olden. Yeah, let's now get it back into Gavin right at the uh, at the free throw line. Let him and Bulby work underneath. Joey tries to bounce it down to Gavin. Gavin gets it back in the corner. Shuffles a little bit. Back to Olden. Yeah. Six minutes to go. Gavin underneath Bobby. Bobby turns baseline. Goes in. Yeah, great shot. Just keep that ball movement going. Keep Bobby and uh, Block active underneath, and and uh, they can they can uh, bring us a W. First two minutes of the quarter, Josh Railers have scored a quick seven points, and there's an easy two, and Land is going to go as Bobby fouls him, and normal wet. And Normal West will go to the line. Yeah, they've just been hanging around a little bit. You know, we, we hit a three, or we get a three-point play, and then they get a three, and a three-point play. So uh, the Railers rattle off a couple there, but now we give uh, a possibility, but, you know, a chance to give a three-point play to Normal West. So uh, the defense has, uh, you know, given up 38 already, uh, right at our average. Free throw on the way, off no good. Gavin the rebound. So it stays an eight-point game, 5.40 to go. Again on the court for the Railers, you've got Bulby, who thought about a three, didn't take it. He'll dribble baseline, gets it over to Max Cook. Now to Joey Olden, Gavin Block, Peyton Ebelair. Those are the five on the floor for Coach Neil Alexander. Yeah. Gavin at the free throw line, turns, backs the dribble out. Nice ball movement, better ball movement from the Railers. Gavin three from the corner, missed it. Rebound comes down to the Wildcats. As I said, uh, Normal West uh, just won't go away. You stretch it out to a 10-point lead, and then they come down and uh, get a basket, get an opportunity for a three-point play. Now they've got a chance to draw closer contact underneath. Yunker misses the easy shot as there was contact in the lane. No good, and the Railers look to run, and we've got a timeout taken by Coach Neil Alexander. 4.55 to go. It's just a 30-second timeout, so we will keep it here. We got a break there. Eight. Well, we got a break. Yunker, Yunker right at, I mean, point blank range, 6'6", six, six, misses the layup, and Bulby gets a big rebound. So uh, we, we uh, dodged a bullet there by the Raiders. 46 to 38 with 455 left. But uh, again, Jeff, we, we just kind of go away every once in a while. We'll get a basket by Bulby or, or block in, inside, and then we'll, we'll go away with it for three or four possessions. And I think this is one thing this team has to, to get better at is, is – kind of learning on the fly well, you know what works during the game and, and just keep pounding it until they they got to make an adjustment you know you don't make an adjustment make them make them make an adjustment to uh, to stop our inside play and we, we've scored too easily underneath there's no reason to go away from it well we always talk about when we find someone who's getting the threes to go down we always find the hot hand well if that happens to be two different players at the same time that's okay with Bulby and block right and, and they're point blank shots I mean Bulby's got uh, Got a, a, a several layups. After the timeout, they try to kick it down to Gavin, and the ball is knocked out of bounds by Normal West. But then again, we there again we we tried to get it into uh, to Bobby, and he was going to give it to Block, uh, cutting. They kind of switched spots, and it was tipped away by by Normal West. 4:45 to go. Cook inbounds out to Joey Olden. Over now to Ebelair. And this is where the Railers run into some trouble against Belleville Altoff. They got the lead, and they didn't know what they needed to do. Were they continue to be aggressive? Did they want to run clock? And that's where I think they were allowing Altoff back in the game. As they find Bulby on the baseline yep. again, and Yunker with a foul, and Bulby's going back to the line for two more. Yeah, Max gets it down to him, and, and uh, I'll, I'll give Max a little hint after the game, but he had two guys while he was taking the ball out with it back to him, not knowing where he's going to pass it. Boom, you throw it right off their derriere. 
and you got two points, just hit them right in the cushion. That ball bounced right back to you, and uh, you got two easy points. Moby misses the first. Moby four of seven from the line so far tonight. Make it five of eight as that one goes down. Nine point lead for the Railers, 47-38. Ticking toward the halfway point of the fourth quarter. Yeah, Four couple. minutes. There it is, there's a big stop. Evil air with the steal. Yeah, there's what we need, a couple steals, a couple baskets and open this thing up. Gavin, nobody gets in his way. He tried to get it to Bowlby, pass just a little too soft and uh, he had telegraphed that one and they knocked it away as it was headed toward Bowlby. And as we've seen so far tonight, this is where usually Normal West would come up with a big shot to draw closer. And there's Robinson with the lip. He missed it. Yunker with the putback. That's no good. And then it's going to bounce on the baseline, and it'll go back to the Railers. Yeah. So let's file that one under <laughs> how to break again. Another one, two in a row, uh, really. And as uh, Normal West is going to bring up the pressure and, and press a little bit, the Railers got to handle the ball, be strong with it. Only so, well, I guess 16 fouls now. So the next one, the Railers will be shooting free throws. Gavin Block into Bowlby, gets it in the center now, over into the front court to Joey Olden. Weaves the dribble back out over to Max Cook. 3.30 to go. Railers up by nine, and Gavin had it knocked away, but a foul is going to be whistled, and Gavin will go to the line, and he will be shooting one in bonus. Yeah, and we haven't been, uh, been great. Just six free throws, uh, four of six from the line. Railers, I think if that's one thing the Railers would, would say we probably have to work on is getting to the free throw line a little more. Need some free throws here in this one. Free throw from Gavin is on the way, and that's good. Yeah, usually he's been pretty good in the, in the fourth quarter this year. Uh, pretty clutch for the junior. Came in tonight a 78% free throw shooter. Got the first one. He's got seven. Second one. Missed it. I don't think we've made two in a row yet. 48-38. Get it, Joey. Tipped by Joey. Still in the backcourt, though. Don't foul him. And then Joey grabbed it, and then he's going to be called for traveling. But nice hustle by Joey. Not many gyms in, a, in the state where you see someone uh, applauded for a traveling call. <laughs> that was, uh, no, but it was a hustle, the hustle, the hustle prior, prior to that. And, and when I was worried, I, I mean, I love the effort in going after the ball, but they were close to a 10-second right. call. I mean, you don't think of that when you're when you're diving after a ball or anything, or you want the ball. But 10-point lead for the Railers. We're at three minutes to go. Railers 48, Normal West 38. Breen. Yeah, you got to get out on Breen. Breen and Yunker really have been the, the two scoring parts. The, the rest of the guys that are on the floor now for Normal West have uh, really not put the ball in the hole a lot. Breen's open over here in the corner. Got it to him late as Ebelair did a nice job closing out on him. Robinson. Get it. Can Peyton. Peyton. Peyton knocks it away. Can Peyton track it down? Saved it inbound, but he saved it back to Normal West. Yeah, that's all right, though. It wasn't back. It wasn't back on uh, on their offensive end. It was on uh, on our offensive end. So good job by Peyton. You saw the quickness right there, shooting that passing lane, uh, just kind of a half a step quicker, and he's got a layup. Down to 2:15. Robinson cuts down the lane, and offensive foul is going to be whistled. Bobby got stepped right in the face too. Bobby stepped in there to take the charge. Yeah, and as he was laying down ta after taking the charge, a normal West. Wildcat got up in the air to finish a layup and came down and stepped Bowlby, gave him a shoe mark across the forehead, and uh, he's he's kind of shaking that one off a little bit. Throw the so ball, Railers got so after the turnover. Yeah, Gavin got away with one there. Head quickly into the front court. Joey will back it out now to Gavin. Yeah, this should be winning time now. The Railers are in the bonus. Take care of the basketball and shoot layups. 155, Railers up 10. Gavin turns at the free throw line, down to Bowlby on the baseline, kicks back out to Ebelair, and the Railers will keep running the motion. Yeah, if they're not going to foul, this should be keep away, and that's about it. Gavin dribbles through the lane, back out to Olden. Bowlby pops out from the block. Picked up his dribble, now out to Joey. Down to a minute 30, and a foul is going to be whistled. That's going to go against Fisher. Fisher's just fouled out of the game, and Joey will go to the line shooting one in the bonus. Well, yeah, yeah, you're right. One in the bonus, and um, 
our most consistent player uh, for sure tonight. The guy that played the hardest is stepping up for the free throw uh, free throw line to knock two. Joey in double figures again tonight. He has 12. Need both of these. Free throw on the way. Missed it. Rebound comes down to Yunker. And the free throw shooting has not been good, but Peyton, did he get the steal? Knocked Timeout. away. Tried to save it in bounds. Saved it back to Yunker again. 1.20 to go. Railers lead still at 10. 48-38. Joey with tough defense out on the top of the Railer. Pressure. Yeah. And you put Joey and, and Ebler and, and Cook out at the top of this 1-2-2. We're extremely quick and, and really long. Good, good, uh, good length on the arms. Green with a long three. Misses it high for the rebound as Gavin Block into the front court to Joey Olden. Now over to Ebler. We're under a minute to go. Yeah, they got a foul now. So uh, get your free throw shooters in. And Joey down the lane. Off the glass. Kabobi is good. Great passing all night, I thought, by the Railers. Uh, of, well, really in the second half, uh, especially, of finding Bulby on the perimeter. Not the perimeter, down underneath. Yunker with Foul. a jumper from the corner. On a three. Fouled by Gavin on a three. I believe that happened down at Collinsville, too, didn't it? That was one of the only few things we did, you know, we did wrong in Collinsville. Tonight's been a little bit different story, but. Yunker's first free throw, no good, Josh. 36 seconds to go, 12-point lead for the Railers. Second one, that one's no good. Well, we found what he can't do from 15 feet. Yeah, it's shooting with uh, nobody guarding him. <laughs> Bobby checks out. Austin Cruz in. What he, what he finished with tonight, Jeff? Uh, he has eight so far. Make it nine as he gets that nine one. Nine for Yunker and how many for Bulby? Bulby with 17. 17 for Bulby. His night's Joey done. Joey Alden. Great game by Joey. Uh, you know, just uh, really led by example. They go down to Max. Max for the easy two on the inbound pass from Gavin. They're under 30 seconds. Railers lead is 13, 52, 39. Long three off the front of the rim, no good. Put back, that's up and good for Norma West. 52, 41. Gavin ahead to Will. Will looks to make a move, goes against Yunker, the little scoop shot, that won't go down. Down to seven. Breen fires a long three. That's no good. Ball will come down to Max. That was where to go, and we're going to win this one. A little closer than we thought. Final score, Lincoln 52, Normal West 41. Railers improved to 12-0 on the season. Normal West falls to 2-9. and nine. Again, our final score, Lincoln 52, Normal West 41. We'll be back with our post-game show in a moment. You're listening to Lincoln Railer Basketball. Coach Neil Alexander now joining us here on the post-game show. Coach, uh, congratulations on the win. Uh, certainly, uh, at least from our perspective, I'm sure for years, uh, it's a win, but it certainly doesn't feel as satisfying as the last four we had down in Collinsville. You know, not at all. And, uh, you know, it's kind of disappointing when you play like we did down there and we come back home and in our own place. And it starts to worry me that we're playing like this in our gym and they got a regional here. Uh, you know, we're, we're not playing well at home. And uh, you, know, you have to be able to do those things. We had two guys that showed up to play. I thought Edward Bowlby and Joey Olden both showed up. Uh, the rest of us, uh, I don't know if we were worried about the cold, the snow, and uh, well, you know how much snow I got to shovel tomorrow and everything else. But uh, you know the others didn't show up. Yeah, Coach, uh, exactly right. And, and really through um, three quarters, almost three and a half quarters, Normal West looked like a team that uh, didn't quite show their record of two and eight or two and nine, whatever they were. Yeah, you know, they're, they're very well coached, they're very disciplined, and they're going to make you play. And our guys didn't want to play tonight. We didn't want to defend. Uh, we jumped out to 12-3, to three and one defensive mistake led to nine points. And, uh, you know, you can't do that. I don't care who you're playing. And, uh, you know, I, I've said this, and I'll say it many times, is, you know, we're capable of beating anybody, but we're also capable of losing to anyone also. 
you talk about uh, Joey and the performance he had tonight. Uh, it, it just seems like Joey, uh, you wonder if there's just that little bit of chip that he has because he missed so much of last season. He wants to be out there because he knows this is his senior season. This is his last opportunity. And he's not going to try and do anything that gets you to take him off the floor. So he wants to be out there. And there's not many gyms across the state that you see a traveling call get applauded. But the hustle that he showed tonight in that play and all over the court, uh, certainly he did have the best game tonight. Well, you know, he, he did. And, uh, you know, uh, I think we had 21 points at half, and I think he had five layups and uh, off of our defense. And, you know, uh, but we, 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 didn't, uh, we didn't attack. I thought maybe the fourth quarter we attacked a little bit more. But uh, we still, we didn't. Uh, it, it's really disappointing because you think coming off of what the kids had last week and everything that they'd be, you know, biting at the bit to get back. But... You know, we play like that, and you're not going to win very many basketball games. Coach, we didn't shoot it from three uh, really well, six of 19 from three, but what happened in the third and fourth quarter is it looked like you uh, really tried to make an emphasis on getting Gavin to the free throw line, kicking it down to Bowlby where they were they couldn't find Bowlby all night underneath on the short porch, and, and really uh, that was really what I, I think separated us were those easy baskets we were able to get with uh, Gavin and Bowlby going at it. Well, I think it was there all night, and finally we, we kind of found it and said, hey, that's open, and, you know, it uh, took us a while to find it, but, uh, you know, you, you have to – you got to catch that right off the bat, and it, it was there. We didn't look, and, um, you know, maybe it's coaching. I don't know, but uh, we sure didn't get the ball where it was supposed to go. Coach, uh, after this one tonight, uh, the schedule starts uh, really uh, packing in with games with uh, to this coming weekend, to the following weekend, and then there's the, the uh, Winter Classic over in Jacksonville. A lot of basketball to be played. Uh, you always talk about making sure you're not playing your best basketball until you're heading down that, you know, February into March. Uh, we saw what they did in Collinsville. Uh, unfortunately, a step back here tonight. No doubt. And, uh, you know, our schedule gets tough now. I mean, we get into our league play, and our league's pretty good. And, you know, playing like we did tonight, we may not even be able to win half of our games. And, uh, you know, that's how good our, our league is. And, you know, you, you have to come every day to play, and uh, it was an opportunity. They, they were playing a 2-2-1, uh, three or quarter court, half court trap. Um, that's exactly what we're going to see when we play Lamphere, and, and we had no interest in trying to attack it to prepare ourselves down the road, and that's what each game tries to do is hopefully you're going to get situations that are going to prepare you for games down the road, and, um, you know, we did not uh, attack very well, and, uh, you know, you got to be concerned, thinking, you know, if that's going to do it to us. What, you know, you know, and if Lafayette was here tonight and they saw how we attacked it, they're really going to come with pressure. And if you attack it the way you should attack it, and you beat it, and then they're saying, whoa, maybe that's not a good thing to do. But uh, I think they have to walk out of here feeling that they can pressure us pretty good. Coach, first true road game Friday night at Springfield. Uh, we haven't been on opposing court yet. Does that bother you with this with this club? No, I think we play better on the road. Uh, you know, we just have to be ready. But it's also a game that what, what really bothers me is, again, I didn't think we did it down at uh, Collinsville, but we sure did it. As, it's playing down to our level of our competition. And, um, you know, sat Friday, and, you know, if we play down to those levels, eventually it's going to catch you. Uh, it's going to catch up with you, and the team's going to have a little bit more than you got, and you can, uh, you know, that they'll step up and, you know, bite you. And our guys, uh, evidently, hopefully this was a learning lesson for them. And, Coach, uh, one of the things, uh, luckily it did not end up being the deciding factor, but uh, left a lot of points at the free throw line tonight. Yeah, you know, again, the free throws and just uh, – I believe that if you're not mentally prepared to play, it affects all phases of your game, uh, from shooting to free throws to rebound. Every every aspect of the game is affected, and uh, we were, we would just come into the game thinking, you know, they'd won two games, and we were just going to go through the motions. And you know, when you do that, uh, you know, at Collinsville, I thought we were ready to play mentally, and the results were outstanding. Uh, here, they weren't ready to play, and you saw the results. So. Um, it, it's a situation that uh, hopefully those guys understand. All right, Coach, we'll let you go after this one. Uh, win number 12 on the season wasn't a tough one, but you get it, and then a doubleheader coming up uh, this weekend at Springfield and then back here against Jacksonville. Okay, thank you.
Railers get the win here tonight by 11. We'll be back to wrap it up in a moment. You're listening to Lincoln Railer Basketball. <laughs> 